Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we're actually going to be working on finishing our tic-tac-toe game. We're going to introduce the other player, player O, and then we're going to actually add some movement detection to see if a move is invalid or not. And this will actually finish our game. We're really, really close. Uh, what I'm going to do also is a couple times I'm going to mention that go ahead and pause the video and maybe see if you can figure out the answer to the problem that we're going to have on your own. Just for a couple seconds, pause the video or, you know, however long you need to, maybe even to see if you can come up with a solution. But it's just going to be a way to practice programming logic and then go ahead and resume the video and we'll work on the solution together. So let's go ahead and start with introducing our second player, our O. So this actually is going to be the first time I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to mention to go ahead and pause the video to see how would you introduce the second player, player O, into this game. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add something in this while loop and we're going to add an if condition. So those are two hints. It's going to be four lines of code in this while loop and in this we're going to add an if condition. So go ahead, pause the video if you want. The answer is an if on the current player variable. Uh, so if the current player is equal to x, we're going to go ahead and swap. We're going to say the current player no longer equals x. It now equals o inside the string. There we go. L if. So this is going to be also known as an else if the current player is equal to o. Uppercase then our current player is going to swap again to equal x. I don't know why Replit is doing this to me. At some point we will switch out to a different IDE, but the Replit is fairly easy to jump ahead, jump into Python quickly. So this is our four, these are our four lines of code. This is going to swap the player, change it from x to o. Uh, just kind of talking through what's actually going to happen right after we check for the winner. We also check to see who's playing. If X is the one who just made the move, then we're going to switch our variable current player equal to O. Else, if O was the one who made the last move, if that was our current player, we're going to swap it to be X. So this is just kind of a, so this is just like a swap. This is just going back and forth, back and forth. X and O because that's how the game is played. Let's go ahead and see this actually work. So your move X and now it says your move O. We can put O on the board. Then it says your move X. It just says now your move O. And let's try to get O to win. Although I think I am. There we go. O is the winner. So because we've been using variables in our functions, we've been using variables in our f strings for printing out information to the user, like O is the winner or your move O. Because of that, all we needed to do was change this one variable. Whenever we changed this variable, it changed who we were checking for the winner. It changed what we were printing out for the user. So that's why it's good to use variables, uh, especially when you're using functions and printing information out that can change. Because if we had your move X, then we would also need to have your move O. Like if we physically typed in here your move X, we would also have to physically type somewhere else your move O. And the code can kind of get a little confusing after a lot of those different types of situations where you have to print different things. So let's go ahead now and take a look at one issue. You might have noticed it. It did just happen. Let's say X wants to go right in the middle. Uh, but O also wants to go right in the middle. And right now we have the ability to overwrite the player moves. So we need to make sure to check if it's a valid move. And if it is a valid move, then go ahead and go there. But if it's not a valid move, we don't want them to go in that specific area. Make this function right underneath the check for the winner function. Uh, so I would recommend go ahead, pause the video, uh, see what we would put in this function. I'm going to give you a hint is valid move. I guess it's not really a hint. This is just the name of the function is valid move. What would you put in here to see if the user move was valid or invalid? The answer that I have is 
having this function is valid move and we're going to put in a parameter. The parameter is going to be the board along with where the user just went. So we can name these variables anything. I think it just helps with maybe understanding what the variable is. Uh, the first one is the dictionary. This is the board that we've been using, the tic-tac-toe board. And the second variable is going to be where the user just went. This is actually going to be the input from the user. Let's go ahead and put a comment here and see what this uh, function does. This function checks to see if the user move is valid. Valued. In this function, what I want to do is a simple if statement. So to actually code this, we're going to check to see if the board at the key where the user just went if this is not equal to an empty space, then that means that there's something in here. So again, this is the dictionary. We're checking just one spot in the dictionary. What spot are we checking? We're checking just the area, just the user move, where the user just went. So if a user typed in five, it would be the board at position number five. If the user typed in one, it would be the board, but at the position number one, now, if this position does not have an empty space, that means something's in there. That means X is in there or an O is in there. Something is occupying the space. That means is valid move it can return false. So is valid move returns a false if we check that one specific area and it's occupied. Otherwise, we can return true. So we've checked this area and it's not equal to an empty string. It means that an X or an O is in there. We can return false. But otherwise, if we don't end up hitting this if statement, we're going to return true. It means that it is a valid move and we can go in that location. So let's actually use this function. We're going to use it right after the user move. This is going to be used with a uh, simple if statement. If is valid move, of course, we're putting in the board and user move. If this equals false, then what we want to do is something a little different. We want to continue. So what this continue will do is it will actually stop running this the rest of the code in the while loop, it'll skip all of this code and it'll go back to the beginning of the while loop. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at what's going to happen with this continue. And let's say X goes right in the middle at five and O also goes right in the middle, but we see we continue to ask the user to make a move. And that's because what's happening is we're continuing in line 101. We're not printing the board. We're not checking for the winner. We're not printing a winner status and we're not swapping the player. We're just going right back to the beginning of the while loop and we're hitting line 99 again, asking the user for their move. If they were to put a valid move, finally we would execute the rest of the code as we see in our demonstration. So this fixes one of the problems. There is another problem. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we see here X is the winner. Uh, but we still ask for the next move for user O and it's kind of like we can still play. So we're going to actually stop the game whenever there's a winner. Uh, we see here at line 107, this is checking the winner status. Winner status is false unless there actually is a winner. So instead of using winner status uh, or winner check variable, we're going to get rid of this line 107. And we're going to actually control the variable that actually is used in the while loop. Is there a winner? That's the variable I want to change based on the check for the winner function. If there is a winner, this will be true and our while loop will stop. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. So finally, X is the winner. 
and what's actually happened is our program has stopped and we can put something in here and we see that it's kind of not really input into our tic-tac-toe game it's just something else that's being input into the console for python so this actually makes our program end once there is a winner it finishes the game and the game is over so we have a working game here now um, but there is one more small problem the problem is when there is a draw or a tie game uh, we continue to ask the user to make a move, but there is no place for them to go. So I want to identify if the board is full and there is no winner, let's go ahead and just call it a tie game and end the game. So we're, we're going to do that. We're going to do that with a new function. Uh, is board full? And this is going to take just one parameter this is just going to take the board because we're not really taking in any user input in this specific area uh, this is going to be similar to our clear board where we're going to iterate that's just the fancy word for loop we're going to loop through all of the keys in our dictionary and for every key in this dictionary we're going to check if the board at this key is equal to an empty string, then we're going to return return false. Because if an area on this board has an empty string, that means that there's a possible space left on the board. So the board is not full, and we're going to return false. But if we've looped through all of this and we haven't hit that line 84 if condition, we haven't returned false, then we're going to return true. Again, what's happening here is we check every single item on our dictionary. We check all of those keys. We're checking the tic-tac-toe board to see if there's an open space. If there's an open space, then we return false. The board is not full. But if we've looped through all of this and we haven't returned false, that means that we're going to hit this line 86. Because when once we return at line 85, this will stop the loop. We will stop everything in this function and we will return back to the person or the code who called this function. So that's why if we return at line 85, we will not hit line 86. It won't return true and false at the same time in this case. Again, we're going to put a quick comment check to see if there is a let's go ahead and add this function now into our code I would say pause the game pause the video and see where you would add this and how you would implement uh, this function into the code uh, but where I would is right here line 12 this is going to be another if condition if the board is full again the parameter the board for is board is full is equal equal to true and is there a winner is still false then this means that we can print tie game. Let's make it more exciting in caps since everything's more exciting in caps. So let's go ahead and try to get a tie game and see what happens because there's a problem still here but I kind of want to demonstrate it. So the problem here is that we've hit the tie game but we're still playing the game. This is because we haven't actually broken out of our while loop. So in this if statement at line 112, we're going to put another new statement called break. And what break does is it stops the whole loop. This is the same for if you're using a while loop or if you're using a for loop. What is happening is that we're stopping the loop and we're saying just quit the loop and continue on with whatever you had after the loop. Whereas the continue, it would say, stop this loop, but loop again. So we wouldn't actually get the code after the continue, 
but we would still continue looping. What the break does, it says from at this point on, just stop the whole loop and go on with the rest of the code after the loop. So this is why we're actually going to now stop the loop. And let's take a look. So we have now tie game, and we see that our code has stopped. The game is now over. So that is the difference between a break and a continue. You can use both of these in either a while loop or a for loop. One last thing that I want to do is part of the move detection to see if it's a valid move. Right now we're just saying your move, but I kind of really would like us to say something to the user to let them know that something is wrong. That's the reason why we're telling them to move again. So we're going to use our F string. We're going to say the current player. And then we're going to say, what are, what are you doing? Not even a question mark. It's just an exclamation mark. So let's say uh, X goes somewhere and O is trying to go to this exact same spot. And we can now identify to the user that it pretty much was an invalid move. And we also have our tie game. So we do have a fully functioning tic-tac-toe game right now. Let's go ahead and actually let somebody win. Uh, let's do it. X. X is the winner. So this is a full game. We finished our tic-tac-toe game. There are some finishing touches that I would like to do. In the next video, we're going to do a recap of everything, every single line. And we're going to make a couple finishing touches, like the ability to let the users continue playing. And also, we're going to end with our classic ASCII art title. But if you have any questions or any of this, again, is not working for you, please feel free to write in the comment section your question or your concern. Or even if you really appreciate the video, just go ahead and drop a like. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I hope to see you at the next video.